we'll be talking to you about three different things today. Uh, residue management, uh, fertilizer incorporation, and a little bit about the seed bed, pre seed bed preparation. So let's dive in. Feel free to ask questions or if you have any comments, they're more than welcome. Don't be shy, okay? You can see I'm very shy. Um, <clears throat> so residue manage, what's it important? Obviously, impact your uh, yields uh, next season, right? Depending how you manage those residues. It can also be a pain in the neck with equipment interferences. If you have a bunch of residue bunching up one edge or something, you know, it's gonna figure your planter, uh, tilt equipment and what have not. <clears throat> it also impacts, and we'll go in into these a little bit more detail uh, as we go along. Uh, soil, soil erosion and infiltration. Notice I'm saying infiltration. I'm not saying um, <clears throat> runoff, but important for that. And the other thing too, uh, at least one of the take home message I want you to have is that crop residues are a resource. Um, they're not trash, they're a resource, right? Corn, average corn crop has about 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre, about 25 pounds of uh, P205, and about 100 pounds per acre of uh, uh, potash. Similarly, um, soybean 45, 10, and 35 um, pounds. The other thing too is that all that residue, you have organic matter on that, adds to the soil organic matter in the soil, also the root system plants putting all that root system into the ground, that organic matter. And there's been a lot of interest here lately, recently about soil health, soil quality. And when we're talking about that, what's the main main thing that we're talking about? Organic matter, right? Um, this pit, we're going to talk about soil compaction and deeper tillage and kind of, um, and also ask questions along the way, okay? Now, we have three different machines here and this one here is a disc ripper that they ran about 12 inches. And what I want to show you, this is put at, at the soil surface. Here is 12 inches. Okay, is it going to 12 inches? No. The other thing that I noticed um, is how far tillage throws soil. And I didn't realize that just doing the tillage plots that we do. Um, but look how far this has thrown the soil up to you know, eight feet. If you look, you can see the sand layer up that far. Did you realize it threw it that far forward? So, you know, because I didn't. <laughs> um, and then this uh, this one does more of the mixing. This one's a disc ripper. And so you have the big shanks up in the front, the lead shanks, and another set of shanks, and the, the discs in the back. And discs, what they do is uh, they tell the soil where to cut and where to shear. Whereas a, a chisel point will come up and lift the soil naturally and let it fall more on its natural planes. So when you go to a road that's being constructed, what do you usually see sitting out there? Disc. A disc. Yep, big disc. <laughs> exactly. And then this pit here, or this pass here, was a zone tiller. It was set at 14, although he wasn't sure it was, it was getting that deep. 14 inches is right here. And which is about right at this layer here. Can you guys see? This layer here. And it's not quite getting there, and I can't even really find them every 30 inches apart. So it's not doing quite what we wanted it to do. And then this one over here is the moldboard plow. Anybody use the plow? Oh, okay, because you should have been here, because they were all like, how do you, how, nobody knew how to run a plow. And I was like, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> um, well, most of the guys around here are disc rippers. So, but this one is said he couldn't get it any deeper than eight inches. And here's eight. So he was doing a good job. Now, the other thing about moldboard plow, and when I go into soil pits, I can always tell where the plow, uh, that you use the plow. And why would that be? No, not, you know, one guy said plow sole, and the last one I said I, I, I didn't know what a plow sole is. It's a plow fan. I was like, oh, I got it. now I got it. So, um, yes and no, but what you'll find is it's really good at inverting the soil over, and so all the residue that's up here will come down to the bottom here. And what you've done is taken, now, most of your residue is going to decompose because of bacteria and fungi. They, they munch on it. And so when you take those, and they love oxygen. So when you take them and you turn them all the way over, you just put them in an area that's not oxygenated. So they're not going to break down the residue the same way. So when you till again and you bring it back up, they'll say it's the same color as it was when I put it down. Well, that's because 
nothing was living down there to take care of it. So some guys, and all I want is I love when farmers think about tillage because they, one guy's come up and said, I know how to change that. And I said, how's that? He said, well, I, they're going too fast, so they're just throwing the soil over. So we're slowing down, so it just kind of sets it on its side more. And, and I'm like, okay, but you know, you're thinking of it. That's all I want is that people think about this. So um, let's talk about soil structure. Uh, just an example of amount of residue on the ground. It's being shown that 30% uh, or higher amount of residue helps uh, cut down erosion uh, from the fields. Uh, about 50% or so, that's just kind of a rule of thumb. <clears throat> but the more residue you have, the, um, the more protection you're getting for that soil. So the point is that boldness is bad, right? Is that bad? All right. Cover crop challenge, right? <laughs> All right. So, why is that? So, the three steps of uh, uh, erosion. So, we have detachment of the particles, transfer, and deposition. What we're trying to do with the residue is avoiding this to happen in the first place. Once that particle, soil particles are, are detached, they can be transported, deposited in another part of the field or in a ditch or whatever. Um, back of the envelope calculations uh, from this fall, uh, one ton of soil kind of on the medium range for a sufficiency index, has about $9 uh, per acre of uh, fertilizer value. So that can, add, adds up quickly. Five tons per acre, that's a typical uh, soil loss uh, high end of a T level. If you work five tons per acre, you guys know how much that looks like, what it looks like? You get a one foot tile, 12 by 12. You gotta put about two um, tablespoons of soil and spread it over that. That's what five tons per acre look like. Not a whole lot, does it? So just uh, something to think